With the release of Rails 7, the asset pipeline has seen some dramatic improvement. What used to be a choice between Sprockets and Webpack has now become a brain twister. But there's an easy way to make the right choice for your project and you'll know what it is by the end of this video. When I first looked into Rails 7, I kinda hoped it would lead me to the correct choice, like it usually does. All I wanted was to play with Hotwire, but instead, I fell down the rabbit hole comparing the different pipeline options. Documentation was still in development, which prompted me to make this video. By the end of it, you should have a much clearer picture of how to use the different asset pipeline options. You'll also know the difference between Sprockets, the asset pipeline, and everything else. The challenge that the asset pipeline tries to solve has to do with managing asset files. When you need to use an image or a CSS file or some JavaScript code, you have to put it somewhere. Somewhere where it's easy to access from within your Rails code. But it also needs to be easy to change, fast to deliver of the network, and so forth. Let's take a quick look at some of the features that the asset pipeline provides to solve these problems. Concatenation is a feature that merges together many files into one big file. This allows browsers to make fewer requests for assets, which is critical when using HTTP 1. With HTTP 2, this isn't such an issue anymore. In fact, it's sometimes better to have many requests for smaller files than it is to have one request for a big file. Minification means compressing the contents of a file to make it smaller in size. Smaller sizes mean faster downloads, which means faster websites. Pre-compilation allows you to use your language of choice to write CSS or JavaScript. For CSS, you might want to use something like SAS, and for JavaScript, you might prefer to use TypeScript or Elm. And the asset pipeline allows you to do that. Fingerprinting is a mechanism to force the reloading of asset changes, which helps with caching your assets in production. You can use long-term caching and bust the cache by changing the file names when the contents of those files change. Asset organization is a feature that allows you to organize your assets into folders. You have folders for your own assets, folders for third-party assets, and folders for library assets. So this is a list of the most common features, but you can add more if you need to. And there are a few gems that provide all or some of these features. For example, Sprockets is one of those gems. It's an all-in-one package and it's one of the oldest in the list. A newer one is PropShaft, which will be the default in Rails 8. It doesn't have all the features of Sprockets, but that's by design. PropShaft enables a faster pipeline when compared to Sprockets. It does it by providing a minimal set of features and delegating the rest to other tools. One of those tools is Import Maps, which provides an easy way to manage third-party JavaScript packages. Its main feature is not having to install JavaScript tools like Webpack, Yarn, or NPM. If you want to learn more about Import Maps, I have a video about it, which I'll link to in the description. So the Import Maps gem is one of those tools that you can add to your pipeline for managing third-party JavaScript. But there are also CSS tools for managing CSS code. One such tool is the CSS Bundling Rails gem, which provides installers for different frameworks. You can use it to install and configure Table and CSS, Bootstrap, Boma, PostCSS, and DartSass. Note that you can install Tailwind CSS in two different ways. If you're using import maps, you don't have Node.js installed, so you need the Tailwind CSS Rails gem. Which brings us to JavaScript bundling. As mentioned before, if you want to avoid installing Node.js, you can go with import maps. But if you do want to bundle your JavaScript, then you can use the JS bundling Rails gem as part of your pipeline. This gem provides installers for ESBuild, Rollup, and Webpack. These bundlers will watch your JavaScript code, compile it, and then serve it to the next tool in the pipeline. As you can see, the new asset pipeline wants you to pick the right tool for your own needs and build your own pipeline. I hope this video was useful and don't forget to check out this video if you want to learn more about how import maps work in Rails 7.